Here we are in section 4.4 with numbers 7 through 10. Here it says find a polynomial that describes the area or volume. So these two are going to have area, these two are going to have volume, they're three dimensional figures. Okay, so we've got to remember some formulas. How do we get a parallelogram area? I think we just did the base times the height like a rectangle. So we really have to take 4x plus 2 times 3x minus 4 to get our area. Well, we can do this. We know how to multiply those things. So we get 12x squared minus 16x plus 6x minus 8. That's 12x squared minus 10x minus 8. So this is the polynomial that represents the area, which is those two times together. Okay, number 8. The formula for a triangle area, that was, if I remember right, was area equals 1 half base times height. Whereas this guy over here was just base times height. So that means we have to take area equals 1 half times, here's the height, 2x plus 2, times x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4. Ooh, that looks big. Let's jump the 1 half in here first. That'll be nice. 1 half times 2x is just x. And that's plus 1. So it's really taking x plus 1 times x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4. And let's do this uh, in a couple of different colors. This is going to be a big one with six of them. So we have x cubed, no x to the fourth, plus 3x cubed minus 4x. And if we take and jump the 1 through, we could, anything that's alike, let's put it underneath. 1 times x cubed, that gives us a plus x cubed. Let's just put these two together, that'll be nice. Plus a 3x squared. Oh, those two aren't alike, can't do that, and minus 4. So t combining everything, we get x to the fourth plus 4x cubed. Uh, let's pick the squared one next, so we're in descending order. And minus 4x, and minus 4. There we go. Good deal. Number 9. Volume. Do you remember how to get volume of this thing? I think if we look back, we'll have length times width times height on this rectangular box thing here. So we get volume equals, uh, we're going to have 2z times 2z times z squared minus 4. So 2z times 2z, that's 4z squared, z squared minus 4. And this one's not so bad. All we have to do here is jump that guy in. That becomes a 4z to the fourth minus 16z squared. There's our volume. Good. Okay, number 10. Ooh, this one's a little bit trickier. You remember volume of a cylinder? It was like pi r squared h. I think that's what it was. Pi r squared h was the volume of a cylinder. So let's punch these in. Volume equals, we have pi times the radius, which is x minus 3 squared, times the height, which is x. I'm going to put these over here. Pi x times x minus 3 squared. Now can we do that? Can we times that guy out? Sure we can. This 2, we can't just jump it in there. We have to do like this, x minus 3 out there, and then actually times it out. Now, if you remember the shortcut, you can do, oh, yeah, x squared, negative 3 times negative 3 is a plus 9, and we'll have double that, negative 6x in the middle. But let's do it out the long way in case you didn't see the shortcut. x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9. That's x squared minus 6x plus 9. And we still have to times that by this pi and the x. So that's just distributive property to jump that in. So we get pi x cubed minus 6 pi x squared plus 9 pi x. Certainly nothing to consider lovely to look at, but there you go. There's the answer.